Hello and welcome to another episode in our RTS series. In this episode, we're going to work on, uh, well, begin work on our creation of our buildings and bases. Now, for in order for this to work, we are we have currently made a menu system for our building here, and the idea being is that we'll click on these cards and it will allow us to place a building where it's valid to do so. So in this episode, we're going to add the uh, visual effect for each the placing and invalid placement. So when they're green and when they're red. Um, so we're going to go through that uh, now. So in here, I'm going to go to uh, we'll go to building units, and we'll make a new folder here for materials. And inside of that, we we'll make a new material, and we'll make this one as um, green placement in our material we're going to make it uh, translucent so change the blend mode from opaque to translucent and because we want it to be some somewhat see-through and the power behind this whole entire uh, appearance could be the fresnel node so i'm going to right click here and add a fresnel node and what the fresnel node does is essentially it will highlight the edges of a shape okay short long and short of it that's exactly what it's doing so you see here on this sphere in a second it will highlight the edges with a white outline like so and we can use that then to add an effect to our object so let's use this creatively to create a new uh, material here for a, a green highlight so first we need the green so we're going to create a green color and set that to green and click OK and we're going to multiply that by the Fresnel now the Fresnel is just output in black and white so therefore all the white parts will turn green and the black parts will remain black and like so uh, we then want to remove the black so that will come down into opacity so using the Fresnel node just drag that into opacity and if now that is black it's going to become see-through so now you see you get this sort of bubble effect uh, with the Fresnel. Now we can change some settings on the Fresnel, including the exponent and the base reflect fraction, uh, to change the appearance of how uh, how much it uh, adds, adds this effect onto it. So for example, if I change the base reflect fraction here from 0 0.04 to something like 0 0.4, this will have a marked indifference in how it will appear. You will now have more of a green hue across the whole bubble I guess in this in this case for using the sphere um, therefore the whole object will have that sort of green appearance but the edges will be sort of highlighted like so and we set different shapes as well um, being applied you can see how it reacts to, to different shapes like so so it kind, of, kind of just looks at like the edges of where the camera, like the tangent to the camera basically. Um, and we'll sort of like layer it on really. But that's a neat effect and we can use it to our advantage here. So I'm going to save that and we'll make another one for our red uh, material. So I'm just going to duplicate that and call it red placement. And this will be used for when you want it to be invalid placement, so you can't place it because another building's in the way, or uh, it, the terrain's not flat, whatever it may be. So this is going to be exactly the same, except rather than green, we'll have red. And apply that. Okay. So hit save on that and we're going to close this. So now we have these two selection materials. Now we're going to apply that to a model and so you can see what it looks like. So let's go into our meshes here just so to demonstrate it. Uh, assets, under village, meshes, house, and we'll drag in this one. So in here we're going to add those uh, materials to it. So let's find my materials and let's find there you go it's got three elements and I'll just add great green to each one 
And you can see the, the effect that you kind of get. So it's quite nice and it looks pretty good for a selection sort of tool. And red, we can see how red's going to look. Like so as well. Pretty nice. So that's how that's going to appear. We now need to tie the building to our slots. So let me just reset all this and delete that. Okay, so now we need to work on our menu and getting our menu to show the individual cards displaying each type of building that that building can build. So we're going to go into first of all our unit base class and we're going to add some information to it that will show on those cards and elsewhere around the game. So on the variable list we're going to go add a new variable and we'll call it unit name. And this will be a text field so change it to a text. Another variable here for unit description which we'll use for things like tooltips. Another one will be for its cost. So buildings will cost wood and stone so let's do a wood cost and that will be an integer. And we also will have a stone cost. Now if it's using infantry or other characters inside the game, they're going to use a food cost. So you can go new variable and do food cost. Now also on the cards we also have the ability to have a thumbnail. So we need to associate a thumbnail to this class. So go new variable and do thumbnail. And this will be a texture 2D. Okay, so with all that stuff in there, we're going to put in some basic uh, default values in here. So unit name by default, we'll go default name, default description, wood cost, we'll put a default value of 5, stone cost 5, food cost 5, and thumbnail will leave blank. Hit compile and save that. Close this window now. And we can go into creating new buildings now with that information. So let's go and add a new building uh, to this thing. So I'm going to right click on my building base, create a child blueprint class, and we'll call this one unit, uh, we'll do a church building. We go into there. And I'm going to change the mesh first of all. So we go to building mesh. And let's change that to the church one. I can't remember which one it is. There you go. Good, good guess. So we'll have that there. Hit compile and save that. And we can go into its uh, default settings up here. If I go to cast defaults, I can change the names of these units. So here I can call this one church. If I can spell it correctly. Um, new description. A place of worship that improves the rate of uh, of upgrades I guess we'll call it I don't know upgrades for each building nearby uh, wood cost will leave at five stone cost will leave I will actually change that to ten food cost well, that doesn't matter and uh, thumbnail we don't have one yet compile save that Let's make another building. So building base, create child blueprint, unit farm base. No, sorry, not base, um building. Let's go in there, let's change the mesh on this one. Uh I don't know what one it'll be. Not too bad. Like that one, that number four, five, that's not using it for capital. Seven is. I hope you get a bet for a church. Uh, we'll do four. Okay, so that's going to be our farm one. Hit compile and save that. And go to class defaults and we'll do call it farm. And farm will generate food. So um, a simple farm will generate food for your army. 
and build up your resources. So wood cost will be higher. I'm going to put in here like uh, we'll do 10. Stone cost will leave it at 5. Food cost doesn't matter. Hit compile and save that one. We'll do one more building. So we'll go building base, right click, create child blueprint class. And we'll call this one unit barracks building. So the barracks are going to be generating our soldiers. So we're going to go in here, go to uh, building mesh. And let's change that one to number two, maybe. It's one look like. Yeah. Let's go for a number two. There you go. And compile that, go to class defaults. And in here, we'll call this one barracks. Um, these barracks will continuously train new soldiers ready to go to war. Uh, wood count, I'll leave it five. Stone count, I'll increase to ten. And food cost doesn't matter. So there's three buildings we're going to use. I'm going to go into my building UI and go to UI card now on the UI card we're going to go to the graph and add a new variable and this will be the building class that's going to be associated to it so go to the variable type type in building and you want unit building base no sorry unit not building we want to use a unit base because we use the same menu for uh, training soldiers as well so we can use unit base and you choose a class reference we want to use a class reference because we're going to be spawning from it and we need to be able to read their default values. Make that editable. And then on our pre-construct event, we're going to tie our details to our various options here. So we'll start off with just car title text. So I'm going to drag that out to get. And then from there, we'll do set text. Plug that into your pre-construct. And we're using the pre-construct because we want to see our changes as we're making the designs here. So I'm going to drag out our building class reference. And then from there, you can get the class defaults. Where we can get that information. So we're going to go into using our unit name into there. For now, we'll leave it like that. Hit compile and save that. Now let's go to our menu and I should now be able to click on each one and choose the building class I'm going to associate to it so this one will give it the farm so you hit farm building and you see the name there change to farm this one we're going to change to uh, barracks and this one we're going to change to church okay so there we have three cards signed up now let's look at how our resources will tie to this. Hit compile, save that, and go back to our unit card. And we've got pH wood here, and we've got pH stone. And I can see I forgot to turn on its variable for stone. So I'm going to go to graph for each of those. Uh, so do resource wood text, get that, set text. And that'll be the wood cost. And we do resource stone text, set text, plug that in there, and then do the same thing there. Now, I don't want it just to output the number, because at the moment this will just output uh, just numbers at the bottom. So eventually we'll put in uh, images as well in here, but what I'm going to do is actually put the word in there too. Now to insert that, you just disconnect where it says in text and then drag out and do top, uh, format text. And you put in here a curly bracket. And put in, we'll put in a uh, num, close curly bracket. And, hit, and then you type in whatever text you want to in, 
uh, include. So I'm putting stone. When you hit enter, the bit inside the curly brackets will become a parameter, which then you can plug in to there. Uh, we can actually get rid of the two text here and cast, save us some time. Just plug that in there directly. So do the same for this. I'm just going to copy and paste that. Wood cost. Just type that in as wood. So our base menu now will say 10 wood, 5 stone, 5 wood, 10 stone, and 5 wood, 10 stone. So you can see the changes being made there. And if you had a thumbnail, we can tie the thumbnail to these images as well. And that will do it for this episode. We've done a lot of setup here. We've got the material set up. We've got a menu set up. What's next is the spawning and creation and placement of those buildings. If you want to watch that part right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can watch all of my content well before anyone else on YouTube all from just $1 a month. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons, YouTube members, and everyone supporting me. It really is amazing, so thank you, thank you so much. If you like what I do, please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.